what? Alright. Just listen. It doesn't apply to you. Okay. Alright, so, uh, this course is designed as a, uh, survey course. Uh, for the different, basically the entire command chain of, uh, artillery. So, artillery goes from the guns, which would be like the mortar, the gun, whatever. We have the FTC, which is the fire direction center. Alright, they're the ones that are responsible for determining how best to employ the artillery against the target, as well as coordinating the fires from the guns and the requests from the observers. And then we have the FO. And the FO can either be like designated forward observer, alright, specialty trained, or it can be in general squad leader, officer, uh, anyone who has a radio and has access to the fire direction center. So, uh, basically, yeah, so this is a survey course. We're going to teach all three parts of that chain, all right? Basically, this is designed to get you the information you need to know to be effective with artillery, all right, and nothing else. So this is not going to go really in-depth into, like, how to shoot M119s. There's a lot of stuff. All right, it will go into how to shoot them, but it won't go into, like, the theory behind it. All right, there's a, there's a lot of... You know, doing sheaths, doing um, area fire missions, all that kind of stuff. Uh, there's a lot of information, all right? New has a really good M11I course, and he has a really good FO course. And uh, I recommend, if this at all interests you, that you take, guys take those courses. Uh, this is just a really quick, down and dirty, like, bare minimum, all right? No, this is only the M119. We will not be covering the M109. All right. So, um, as far as course orders goes, um, basically, uh, everyone should be on me when we get in game. All right. We just uh, when I say on me, take a knee. Uh, just get around, take a knee. Have your weapon lowered. All right. Same thing as the machine gun course. We're not going to point weapons at things we don't intend to destroy. And in this case, that goes quadruple for artillery and mortars. All right. Uh, artillery and mortars tend to have uh, bigger explosions associated with them, so people uh, people mess up. All right, that makes more people dead. So um, again, uh, wait for my command. I'll give fire orders and stuff like that. All right. Uh, also, uh, please don't dick around with the animation system. All right, just pay attention. It's distracting for me. It's distracting for other people who are trying to learn. All right. Uh, if you have any questions, you can do the cease, uh, cease fire hand gesture. All right. Uh, it's shift number head five, and I'll get to you. Let, I'll finish my thought, and I'll answer your question. Uh, feel free to ask questions, and I uh, hope everyone learned something. As soon as uh, six gets back, sticks gets back in, we'll uh, go into the game. <laughs> All right now, sync. You've got you gotta update your add-on. All right. Yeah. So just listen along. And sticks. You guys both both need to update. Trusted. Oh, okay, see you're doing it right because you got the wrong version of Ace. You gotta use this nice. Sorry guys. All right. So go back, try to fix your stuff. Sorry. All right, take us in. Take us in. Hello, Abja. Oh, there they are. Alright. Ah, uh, Falcon? Yep. Is it gonna be like Team 3, Gun 3? Yeah, pretty much. 
Oh, okay. Alright, everyone on me, take a knee. Alright. Very cool. Alright. Is this one okay? Yeah, it's fine. Alright, so, uh... Welcome. Alright, so this is our artillery area. As you can see, we've got some 119 set up, and we've got some mortars. Alright. So, basically, the idea behind this course, we're going to run through it as follows. First thing we're going to do is we're going to cover the mortars, all right, because that's the very basic principles of indirect fire, all right. Once we finish the mortars, we'll move on and we'll talk about the M119s, all right. We'll talk a little bit about forward observing and uh, using the radio, and then we'll finish off uh, with some practice, which I just realized I forgot to put in radios, so we'll see how that goes. Might have some, uh, might have to abbreviate the end of that. We'll figure it out. Alright, so, uh, pretty much get started. And I just realized that's not the only thing I've forgotten. So, shit. One second. I might have to take a five minute break here while I fix the mission. Need more to range tables? Yeah, I forgot the range tables. Yeah. <laughs> All right. It happens. Uh, we also we also haven't got map tools in case you yeah, need yeah. to use them. Ah, oh, fuck. All right. Uh, take five. I'll be right back. Team Q party. One thing he also didn't do is give us ammo. So you'll have to beat each other. So that's to death. good. <laughs> no, we don't need ammo. My first that's training mission, I did with Jedi. And he was the only person who got a gun and gave the rest of us flare guns so that we could entertain each other but not kill each other. <laughs> and then he proceeded to shoot people when he got bored. So, yeah, we're so we could tell each other that we well, killed each on. other because we hit each other with a flare. <laughs> okay, fine. Alright, so Falcon's away uh, for a few minutes, uh, setting up the map a bit at the, this mission, but uh, in the meantime we can talk about a few other things. Uh, we have, I guess, basically, uh, we'll go over real quick the, the steps in uh, calling for indirect fire. As Falcon alluded to, there are um, uh, several different types of people that can call in for fire, indirect fires. Those include uh, squad leaders, platoon leaders, uh, anyone with a radio, basically, uh, and then someone who else who is a dedicated uh, forward observer. Um, so that person then calls into the fire direction center, uh, the FDC. And uh, that person then calculates a firing solution for whatever guns are available. So if it's a if he's the FDC for a mortar uh, team, then uh, that means obviously mortars are going to be firing. He can be the FDC for a uh, a battery of uh, large artillery like these M119s or um, uh, the M M109 Paladin. So there's really, really M109. Uh, I think that's is that right? That's the uh, the one we just added. That's the Paladin. Yeah, the Paladin. Um, Are we going to use it today? No, not, not today. We're just sticking with what we have here. So oh, after, no. after the FDC calculates the solution, he will relay the uh, solution to the gunners, who then uh, will prepare the gun to fire, and then the FDC will give the order to fire. And uh, once, once fires have uh, landed, the observer or whoever called in the fire mission will give feedback basically saying, you know, did you hit the target? We need more fires. Um, and that's called a BDA, which is a Battle Damage Assessment. Uh, so you'll hear that uh, referred to um, people requesting BDAs, uh, sending BDAs, and that lets the, the gun crew know uh, what adjustments they need to make for the next fire. Uh, does that make sense? Mm -hmm. How's the wife? <laughs> What's that? How's the wife? The wife? Yeah. You know, arc zone, arc zone. Yeah. As I've alluded to before, you're rapidly moving into my shit list. I recommend you don't move into it any further. All right. Okay. This is serious training. Okay. We uh, just already had. Did we? We talking to every start mission, or? Yeah, hold on, I'm I'm almost done. Okay, deal. Okay. So one thing that's going to be important, uh, again, uh, with 
with that whole sequence that I just described with calling in fire ambitions and, and sending back uh, communications is that uh, the radios work properly, so you're going to need a high-powered radio. That means either a um, PRC-119 or a uh, 117. Both of those radios are, are high, high power. And uh, again, going along with radio theory, uh, and this is probably not going to be a problem for the forward server, but you're going to want to be up high as possible to get uh, good reception and communications so that uh, you don't have to keep repeating things and that there's uh, clarity all around. Does anyone know about the new uh, their new vehicle uh, racks that uh, are being implemented in Acre? Yeah, they're pretty cool. Yep. Yeah, so that, that's a helpful thing too. A lot of times you'll have a vehicle uh, around with the guns to hold the ammunition and to uh, facilitate the uh, communications. Uh, what was it? Alt Shift Q, right? Uh, I think so. Okay, yeah. I, yeah, I, vehicle racks Just racks checking. Q. I don't know it yet. I always hit it by accident. And, uh, yeah, thank you. Wasn't that the demonstration course? I'm no, sorry, it wasn't. Uh, never mind. Vehicle racks were not covered on the female course. Are you sure? I taught it, I would know. Uh, okay. Uh, so for. Mortars, uh, there are three different kinds of uh, rounds that, that get fired. Uh, those tend to be uh, high explosive, which is the most common, uh, white phosphorus, which is not as common, and then illumination rounds, which can also be pretty common. Um, with the M119s, uh, you have a few more options um, as far as uh, setting the, the fuse height, um, set, basically setting when the rounds detonate, and uh, then uh, Like what, what type of round you're using, so you can um, again have those three basic types high explosive, white phosphorus, illumination. And they take a little bit more work to set up. Uh, is everyone here basically has, have used mortars before? Everyone used some type of mortar, either the 60 or the 81 mm? Alright, yeah, I guess I can, has anyone not used the mortar before? Well, I've never used it in a, like the UO environment with the, the communications and everything, but like single player and with just a friend or two, I have. Oh, cool. Okay. Yeah, I use it with auto uh, auto aiming. You just click on the map and <laughs> it, it. Yeah, that's by far the easiest uh, aiming system. It's just a point and click. So you look on the map, you choose where you want the rounds to go and click, and then they, they magically land there. Um, what Falcon's going back to fix right now, and um, what we use a lot of the time is the range tables. So if you know um, how far away you are from where you want the, the mortars to land, and you know the direction, then that's all you need to, to create a firing solution. So it's not quite as easy as the point and click, but uh, it takes a little bit of math and uh, just knowing how far away your target is. All right, and that's and covered we're here. Going into on that right now. So the math, math stuff is covered right here. Yes, we will be covering all that. Good. I, I always wanted to learn this. Thanks. Yep. All right, sweet. So I guess just to review the, the map uh, basics, if you want to zoom in on uh, our location right now, we are in grid 127 by uh, 090 uh, at the RD marker on the map by the coast on the uh, what, east side of Turnaroos. And if you zoom in to um, where you can see the three-digit grid, uh, six-digit grids, I'm sorry, um, those are 100 meter squares. Is everyone uh, following me so far? Yep. Uh, I just got back, damn it. Okay, so if you see where the gray uh, kind of grid lines are, uh, they face like that, almost like a, uh, there's grid lines, the gray ones run up, up and down and then left and right. Uh, each one of those boxes is uh, 100 meters square. So from one, one grid line to the next, either up and down or left and right, that's 100 meters. Um, so if you can look, uh, Probably from our location right now, we're probably about 100 meters from uh, the road, it looks like. Maybe not quite that far, but the road to our east. And then if you zoom out to where you have the uh, four digit grids, so where it says 1, 2, and 0, 9, and the, as you zoom out on the map, uh, those turn into one kilometer uh, grid squares. So those are 1,000 meters on each side. 
So uh, if you can tell me from our current location uh, about how far we are to the uh, center of the town of Berezino to the west. Uh, looks like about 700. That's probably a very good guess. We're definitely less than a kilometer because we're both inside, both uh, our location and the town of Berezino are both inside the uh, four digit grid square. So that means we're, we're definitely within a thousand meters. 700. All right. Pretty close, probably. Uh, Bob, go ahead and uh, pick the net mission. It's version six. Same thing. Okay, got it. Sorry about this delay, guys. Um, my apologies. I'm not starting too late, though. Alright, go ahead and uh, fill back up into the teams, alright? Just, uh, hopefully it gave the guys who came in late uh, time to get their shit set up. Alright, uh, please fill out the teams from the top to the bottom. So, we need someone in team one. And Dix, can you pick team six there with six? Alright, just slot him in and if he's AFK, okay. uh, Chuck or Bob, you guys can give him a hand. Alright, hit over. Okay. Alright, as I said before, it's a survey course, alright? So, as a survey course, we're going to basically give you an overview but not a really in-depth I would recommend that if new offers is a 109, 119 or mortar course or FO course again that you guys take them uh, you'll definitely know more than most people are taking them but um, we're not going to cover everything that they cover and n nowhere near as, as in-depth um, so we're basically doing what uh, we're doing an overview of what really is about four courses so yeah don't worry, Eric. So I'll be there. Okay, take us in. disappointing that I can pick you out because you're the only one without a weapon arc zone. Just saying. Why? Uh, just have to be, you just have to make a scene. Alright, whatever. Alright. Anyways. <clears throat> so, uh, sorry about that. Um, okay. Uh, Sorry. So we're going to uh, we're going to do the mortars. All right, first because the mortars basically have every principle of indirect fire. All right, everything else is just a scaled up or scaled down version of what we're going to do with the mortars. All right, maybe more complicated, maybe more precise because of the way we we get them. But ultimately, in artillery, everything comes down to three things: charge, which is how much propellant you're putting in the round. All right, which dictates its velocity. The elevation. Right, which dictates, uh, you know, how basically the angle at which you're going to fire the gun. All right, which gives you the range, and then the deflection, which tells you what direction you're going to fire the gun. All right, where it's going. Those three things put together are going to give you one, uh, one spot that that round's going to hit. All right. Uh, I'm sure everyone knows some basic physics, right? Just ballista, uh, projectile motion, right? Simple uh, equation of motion. All right, that's all we're doing. We're using that, and uh, from that we can get uh, basically rounds on target, all right, with maximum effect. Everything else is just a way to determine how to communicate those three things and how to, uh, 
you know, get the rounds to where they need to be. So with that in mind, uh, I'd like everyone to come over here. We're going to grab from the middle box, just the middle box, you're going to grab one map tool, all right, and you're going to grab one M5, uh, 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 grab both of the range tables. There's two sets, grab one of each, all right. Alright, once you guys have that, just uh, regroup over here on me, and we'll uh, we'll continue. No. All right, sweet. So, uh, for the mortars, I think the best way to do this is just to have you guys uh, get some practice. All right, so. Uh, the, the mortar is pretty simple. All right, we're going to be firing 81 millimeter mortars today. As you see over there, we've got uh, like six mortars lined up. We'll go by teams. All right. So team one, you'll take the one on the far right. Team two, the next one in, etc. All right. When you guys get there, uh, you guys will each take turns being a gunner and assistant gunner. All right. So the mortar is basically a high angle uh, only uh, weapon. Uh, it uses a mortar charge, which basically uh, has a, uh, a firing charge in the bo base of the mortar. Uh, in the real mortars, you have charge rings. All right, so the charge rings are attached at the bottom there. Uh, in Arma, right now we only have three charges: close, medium, and far. All right, you select the charge by uh, pressing F when you get in the when you get in the gun, just like you change between semi, burst, in your M16. All right, whatever key you use for that is the same way you change the charge in the mortar, and it appears the same way. It'll say M252 in the top right and they'll say close, medium, and far. All right? uh, that's the biggest mistake people make when they're firing the mortars is they forget to set the charge and they end up with a big short round. All right? That's dangerous because typically with mortars you're going to be firing over the troops at some point and if you get a short round uh, you could land on your own platoon and people aren't going to be happy if you end up killing them. Falcon, uh, would you like to explain the difference between a low angle and high angle? I'm not sure if everyone right. knows So what I mean by high angle is that there's two there's two ways to get the round to the target usually. Uh, first is you could fire the shell uh, with a low angle, right? Uh, so just like a uh, if you guys have ever played around with a garden hose, right? And uh, if you when you're a kid, if you uh, if you notice uh, if at 45 degrees, right? That's the uh, like optimum angle for range, right? So just about 45 degrees. Uh, in an ideal environment is where you get maximum range out of that garden hose, right? Well, if you uh, go at an angle less than 45 degrees, all right, there's going to be a point where you're basically, uh, the water's going to be hitting the ground uh, somewhere closer from you than your maximum range shot, right? And uh, if, you've, if you think about it, that same place, so if we pick a point, let's say halfway, right? I can. There's going to be some angle less than 45 where I can where I can hit uh, halfway between my my feet and where my maximum range on the garden hose is. And the other way I could hit there is if I go back through 45 and I begin uh, moving towards straight up 90 degrees. Right, there's going to be another angle greater than 45 degrees where I'm also going to be able to hit the same place. So that second angle would be referred to as a high angle shot, right? Because it's above 45 degrees. And the first angle would be referred to as a low angle shot, right? Does everyone understand what I'm getting at? Yep. Okay, cool. Right. So basically it's just uh, uh, either you're going a uh, high angle shot, it's the time of flight is going to be longer, all right? It's going to have more hang time, basically. Also, it's more affected by the wind. So the wind gets a chance to blow the round around for a long, a lot more time. So your your variation is going to be a lot greater. So for that reason, uh, when you're using the artillery, we'll, howitzers, we'll try to shoot low angle. All right, but with mortars, we don't have a choice. All right, we we're only basically shooting high angle. Um, there actually when is, is, that is that modeled in Ace right now. What is is that modeled in Ace? The wind right now. Yeah, the wind on artillery. Yes. 
Oh, uh, okay. One reason you might want to use a high angle shot uh, with artillery is uh, if there's something in the way. So, you, say you have a, a high mountain in between you and the, the target. Right. Uh, low angle shot might not cut it. Might hit. Him right. Before we'll you we'll talk it. about that. So, yeah, he's right. So, the high angle you use a couple situations. One, if you're firing onto a hill, uh, you'd use high angle because low angle, if you miss a little bit, you're going to end up missing by a lot. Uh, just because it's coming into the hill at a very small angle. And so if you happen to miss the hill, then it's going to fly past the hill for a long ways, um, which could be a big problem. All right. The other time you're going to use high angle is, like he said, when there's something in the way. Uh, with the mortar, there actually is a chance to use high angle and low angle, but it's only for angles really close to 45 degrees. Um, and they're both, like, you don't have this great disparity, right? Because in reality, there's a range of different charges and different um, elevations that will give you the same. So you might have multiple solutions. And we'll see that when we use the BCSs, which is the ballistic computers. Uh, you might be able to get six solutions for a particular target. Uh, so some of them are going to be really low angle. Some of them are going to be really high angle. And that's because we can, in addition to just being unlike the garden hose where we have a constant velocity, we can also change the velocity with the charge. All right. So as you said, charge. All right. So we've talked about charge, um, basically how much velocity you're giving to the round, how much propellant, all right? The deflection, which is basically your bearing to the target, uh, which is defined by, basically it's the orientation of the gun line. So the gun line is the imaginary line that connects to the, where the round lands to the gun, all right? Uh, it's basically a top-down 2D uh, view of the flight path, all right, of the round. So the orientation of the gun line is going to be your deflection, and then you have your elevation, which, as we uh, talked about before, gives us the range. All right. And with RD, uh, one critical thing to keep in mind is if you're trying to shoot longer, are you going to add elevation or subtract elevation? Uh, that, de that depends. Right. right. It does depend. But let's assume that we're firing a... Uh, relatively like standard high angle mortar. Subtract elevation. So if I want to what did I say? Did I say longer or shorter? Longer. Longer. longer right. So if I want to fire longer, you're right. I want to subtract elevation. Now yeah, as as someone mentioned that does depend, but in general that's usually the case based on the elevations we're really firing at. So that's something to keep in mind. Is generally a uh, flatter trajectory is going to make it go longer unless we're shooting low angle. So that's basically only with the howitzers, though. But yeah, for mortars. So the reason the reason I say that for mortars is because mortars a lot of times you'll be doing, especially with 60 millimeter mortars, you'll be doing observed fires. All right, where you can actually see where your mortars are landing, and you're your own your own FO basically. You're adjusting them. It's what we call direct fire. And in that case, especially with the mortars, if you keep that in mind, a lot of people mess that up and they end up adjusting the wrong way. All right? So with mortars particularly, if you're trying to shoot closer to you, all right, you need to add elevation. If you're trying to shoot farther away, you subtract elevation. All right. So uh, we're going to practice right now uh, calculating a mortar target. All right? And then we'll go to the guns and we'll practice shooting. So... I'm going to mark a target on the map, all right? So our mortars are over here at our artillery mark. Uh, so I'm going to see here. Give you guys approximate mark. All right, does everyone see the mortars mark? Mm hmm Yeah. Okay, all right. so that's about where the mortars are. Does that make sense? Yeah. Where's that fence? Oh, wait, hold on. No, they're not. I lied. They're, like, right here. All right. So there's our mortars. And let's... We're going to shoot at a target we can see. So we're going to shoot up at this tree line. Uh, if everyone looks about 330, see that hill, big hill up there? We'll, uh, we'll calculate a solution for the uh, edge of the tree line up there on that hill. Let's see, I see the road going up there. Alright, sweet. So the first thing we're going to do 
is we're going to find a, a grid ref. And this is going to be usually given to us by our observer, right? The observer uh, will see where the target is, right? He'll want to shoot at it, and so he's going to give us a grid of where of where he thinks the target is, all right? And uh, so in order to shoot at it, what we need to do is um, we need to figure out the deflection and the elevation, right? As well as the charge. So the first thing uh, for mortars is have a target. So I'm going to say our target is going to be right here. So I'm going to say TRP is uh, 101, so target reference point 101. Does everyone see that on the map? Yeah. Uh -huh. Okay. So the first thing we need to do is we need to get our deflection. So uh, does that if, if so the easiest way to do this is using the map tool. So everyone should have a, a map tools and to get see the map tools hit H and just click on the map somewhere and that'll snap the map tools to wherever you click. Has everyone got that? You need to hold down H while you click. Yeah, hold hold down H and then click. Sorry. So is everyone everyone okay with getting the map tools to their position? Yep. All right. Uh -huh. So the map tools consists of uh, it's also known as the roamer and uh Basically, it's got a compass in it, and then that compass can rotate. So if you hold shift and click on the roamer and spin it around, you can see that I can uh, basically uh, draw a, or I can rotate the map tools so that I can point the, the lines in a certain direction. So it's, got, so it's got that, and then it's got a scale. And the scale we're primarily going to be using is the one on the right side. It goes from uh, 0 to 16, all right? And uh, that scale is uh, is actually half half scale for the map. So if I measure for, if I measure something, let's say I measure a hundred meter or a thousand meter a kilometer grid square, it'll tell me it's five hundred meters. All right. So whenever I measure something with the map tools, I always remember I have to double the range. All right. And the reason they do that is so that uh, basically you can measure longer distances using without having like a huge scale. All right. So, I have my mortars. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the, I'm going to center the map tools on my pos on my position. So I'm going to hold H. I'm going to click down where it says mortars. All right. Then I'm going to get the bearing of the target. And the easiest way to do that is simply to click on the target while holding J. All right. And that'll orient the map, uh, the the orient the tools to my direction. All right. So, now, question is, what kind of uh, measurement am I going to use uh, for my mortars? And the the one you really want is the radians, the milliradians. So, does anyone can anyone tell me what my bearing or my uh, deflection is uh, in milliradians? Fifty-eight thousand eight hundred ten. Right. So, does any, anyone not know how he got that? This is a review of like the map tools. So if you have never used the map tools before, I'm assuming almost everyone here has used the map tools at least once, right? Well, not me. I, d I haven't. Okay. I That's never fine. really had to. But I know right. how to use it in real life. Okay. Me too. Sweet. So uh, for those who haven't used it before, um, so the outside, right? Does everyone see how he got 5,800? 10? Yeah. So basically, the outside, the, 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 the white compass there, that's, uh, that's basically a compass in milliradians, all right? So there's 6,400 milliradians in a, in a circle, uh, and it's basically a very precise angular measurement. And uh, the numbers around the outside are in hundreds of milliradians, so like the 2 is 200 milliradians, the 5 Eight or the 58 is 5,800 milliradians, and then each dash is 20 milliradians. Uh, you can count that out for yourself. Uh, so, if you hit J and you look at it, it's kind of in between the first and the or 58 and the next dash, so that's about 10, right? So 58, 10 milliradians will be our deflection. And the mortars are really nice because uh, the mortars basically uh, the way it works right now, at least in in in, our, in Ace 
is that when you bring up the T and E, it tells you basically your azimuth. So it tells you uh, your your deflection from true north. All right. So all you need that's all you need to know. You don't have to worry about your azimuth and your deflection being different. They're they're the same for the mortars. All right. So. I'm going to put up some other points, all right, and I'm going to have people get the deflections to that. So if you guys were in a mortar or an RD team right now, you'd want to have a, a pencil and paper in front of you so you can be writing these things down. Uh, right, like and, sure you and you're going to want one today, so make sure you've got one. Absolutely. So then you can have uh, the easy reference to each of your firing, uh, each of your target reference points. Exactly. All right, so I'm just going to put down a couple here. Uh, Why don't we just have people uh, working on those, if we could? And I'm going to ask uh, different groups to do different ones. Alright, so group one, and everyone should write all these down because these are the fire missions we're going to fire while we're over at the mortars. So, everyone should be writing these down. So, group one, what's the deflection to target reference point 101? We've already done this one, so it should be really easy. 6180. Uh, oh, sorry. I was looking at two. Um, yeah, <laughs> 5810. Alright, group number two, target point 102. And if uh, you don't get it already, you should be looking at the one, your group number. Alright, look for the, the one that ends in your group number and figure it out while you're waiting. Alright, so group, uh, group number two, what's the deflection to TRP 102? Come on, group two. There's two of you. 6180. 6180. Uh, can can you check them, Bob? Yeah, that's it. Okay, cool. Group three. 4950. All right. Group four. 3720. Group five. 2690. And finally, group six. 4730. All right, those all check out? I'm looking here. Uh, so far, yeah. All right, cool. Let me know if there's a problem. All right, so everyone feel comfortable getting deflections? Hi, sir. I think everyone. That's pretty simple. I think everyone should, shouldn't have a problem with that. All right, so the next step is getting the range. All right? So to get the range, the best, the easiest way to do that is... Again, center your map tools on your position, so the mortar mark. You're going to orient to your target reference point. Then you're going to hold, you know, hold left click, basically, and slide on the roamer, and that lets you drag the roamer around on the map. From there, you can just line up the edge with, uh, so uh, orient it first, then slide it off to the side, and then measure. So put like the, what I like to do is I like to put the zero point at my target, and then I scroll in and I look at how far it is to the mortars. Alright, and remember, every single uh, range there is doubled. Alright, and those are in hundreds of meters. So the 8 is actually 1,600 meters, the 6 is 1,200 meters, etc. Alright, so we're going to do this again. This time, I want all the groups to give me the range. So group 1, what's the range to our target? To TRP 101. Uh, sorry, can you repeat the uh, range estimation part? I just don't get it. 
Alright. So center the roamer on or use H, click on the mortars, right? That uh, both aligns the roamer to the north and centers the map tools. Alright? Then you want to orient the map tools just like we did to find the deflection. Alright? Then we're gonna click and drag on the map tools and move them off so that you're lining up the right edge, you're basically like 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 you're gonna draw a line with a ruler or a straight edge. Alright? And then basically measure, put the zero, the corner of the of the map tools on your target, and then measure the distance to the mortar mark using the scale on the right side. Does that make sense? Uh, yes, thank you. With right. the millimeter bar on the right side. Right, those aren't yeah. millimeters though. Oh yeah, sorry. Yeah. And remember, each number is in hundreds, and you have to double it to get the actual range. Does that make sense? Yes. Okay. So group one, what was it? Sorry, I missed that. 1,650 meters. 1,650. Right. Yeah. It's 1,750? I don't know. You might be right here. I got 1,650 as well. Okay. I, I think it's 1,650. Bye-bye. Right, do you do you do you see what the issue is? Yeah, it's good. Okay, because yeah, it's somewhere between eight and yeah, yeah, yeah. So somewhere between sixteen and seventeen. All right, cool. All right, group two, one hundred two. But it's the range. Group two. Fifteen eighty. Fifteen eighty. Yeah. That's good. All right, group three range. To 103? I got Sorry, 350. 350? Yep. Alright. Um, you didn't double the range, did you? No, I did. It's just really close. Yeah, it's super close. Alright, 104. Uh, sorry, group 4, what'd you get? Uh, 260. Uh, no. Mm. I think it's a little longer than that. 26 to 7. Did they forget to double? Yeah, you gotta double it, remember? So, first off, it's... So, it's showing... 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 Uh, three... Three and a half. Alright? So, you need to double that and multiply it by 100. Uh, so no. I see... I see 10. I see f uh, 13. Thirteen and a half. Mm -hmm. Oh, right. you, 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 I, I, I think you used the uh, false side, uh, not the yeah, he's, he's side. using the left side. You got to use yeah. the right, the right side. side. You need to use the right side of the roamer if it's oriented up. Don't use the millimeter ones. That's just measuring in millimeters, which isn't helpful. You need to use the opposite side of the roamer. Uh, then it is in it. Okay. Does that make sense? So, what you do is the, the you have a uh, Three columns. Uh, so we have, or we have a couple columns here. We have range, all right, which is basically the range that we just computed using the map tools, and that converts that to an elevation in mils, all right. So it's the elevation in mils on the actual mortar itself. So if I want to fire, for example, HE close at 200 meters, my T and E will be set to 1139er mils, all right with a charge of close. <clears throat> the next the next column gives me my altitude. Oh my god, I'm losing my voice. <clears throat> One second. So my next next column gives me my altitude change. All right? And so basically it says for an altitude change of minus 100 meters, you add this many mils, all right? So let's say I was shooting at 200 meters, but my target was uh, 200 meters below me. All right. In that case, I'd have to add to my elevation uh, uh, 186 uh, uh, mils, right? Yeah. So I have to add 186 mils to my elevation. So I'd I'd take 1139er and add 186, and whatever that gives me would be my uh, would be my true. Uh, Elevation or elevation that I have to fire at to hit the target. Same way, if we're 
if we are shooting at a target that's above us, we do the same thing, but we subtract that. So if I was shooting at 200 meters at a target that's 200 meters above me, I'd have to subtract 93 mils. Now, most of the time, you'll see as you go out to like far charges, that that difference gets smaller. But as you increase the elevation, uh, the el uh, uh, or sorry, as you get to the extremes of the mortar uh, at the charges, then the difference does make a, it does make a big difference. It's not just one or two um, mils difference. So, my rule of thumb is if the target is more than 50 meters above me, then I need to take in the elevation to account. 50 meters above or below. All right. If if it's within 50 meters, it's better to just shoot shoot it and take less time to actually calculate it out because it's not going to make that big of a difference. All right. Okay. The next thing would be a change in the time of flight. So the time of flight is in the far right column. All right. So the the second to right column is basically how much that elevation change will impact the time of flight. So for example, if I'm firing HE charge medium at 1,000 meters, my time of flight is ordinarily 20.3 seconds. If I'm firing at a target that's 200 meters above me, all right, then that makes my time of flight is going to be 17.8 seconds instead. Or 17.9, one of them. All right, does everyone understand? So mm -hmm. does anyone have any questions about what any of the columns are or how you might calculate them? All right. So I want you to use the 224 range table and pretend like we've got, we've actually got the right mortars. And I want you to calculate the elevation for your TRP. So group 1, do TRP 101. Group 2, 202. Group 3, 3 103. Group 4, 104, etc. 13.5 minutes, 36 seconds flat. All right, yeah, and if you want to get the time of flight, that's good, too. Yeah. All right, I'll give you guys a couple more seconds here. Uh, quick question. Yep. If there is more than one charge that will get us the distance we need, do we normally use the most powerful or the weakest? Ah, good question. So in mortars, you go for the lowest time of flight. Gotcha. The only exception to that is if there's like a really big hill in your way. Like you're like literally behind a building or something, then go for the one that's a higher angle, because or else you might hit the building. Yeah, that makes sense. All right, so group one, what elevation are we going to be firing at? And you can Thir give me the time of flight if you did that too. Yeah, thirteen forty-five now at at thirty-six seconds flat. So 13.45 and 36 seconds. All right. Cool. Yes. All right, group two, what elevation? Group two. 1360. Sorry, say again. 1360. 1360. Very good. All right, group three. Uh, 1456. Oh, also tell me the charge. Sorry. So, group one, what charge was that? Far. All right, group two. Far. Group three. Medium. Alright, group four. What was the, what's your elevation and charge? Charge medium elevation two one ninety nine. 
seconds to one point six. Very good. Group five. Elevation, or sorry, charge medium, uh, elevation 1163, time of flight 20.6. Very good. And group 6. Charge far, elevation 1229, time of flight 34.2. Very good. Alright, does anyone have any questions? Alright, you're all officially pretty much qualified to shoot the mortars. The only thing you have to do is go out there and actually do it. Um, so just before we do that though, I want to talk about one last thing. So this is a pretty typical scenario I've given you guys. Uh, I've given you guys a list of TRPs, alright? Something a mission commander might do, right? These are suspected enemy locations. Basically anywhere where he wants to be able to deliver fire almost instantaneously. So as the mortar crew, uh, if your commander doesn't mark TRPs, you should at least suggest it. I mean in a rare case they'll say no, but pretty much any mission where you've got a mortar, uh, the only thing I can think of the exception is like a light infantry thing with a 60 mil mortar where you're just going to use it in a direct fire roll. Uh, in that case, you probably wouldn't put TRPs up. But anything else, uh, you're probably going to have TRPs. All right. So as soon as you get in the game, you should begin immediately doing this for every TRP that you've got. All right. Noting the elevation difference. All right. If it's if it's significant, adding that into your 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 calculations, finding the deflection, the range, and the elevation. Alright, at that point, uh, the gun probably has, yeah, and writing everything down, doesn't help you calculate it and then don't have it in a clear, precise manner. Whatever works for you so that you can figure it out quickly. Alright, the last thing is, for each weapon system, typically you'll be given an FPF. Alright, and especially in a defensive mission that stands for Final Protective Fires. Alright, this is where you should have your gun oriented at all times, if, unless you're firing a mission. And an FPF is basically the oh shit, we're about to get overrun fire. Alright? So that's fire that's usually extremely danger close, so it needs to be your most accurate calculation. And basically it's where you keep your gun oriented unless you've got another mission. So let's say uh, I made an FPF for, uh, you know, zero, uh, I'll write Barnard on the map, but uh, 12509 or 2. Alright, that's our FPF. I'd calculate that solution and then I'd always have that solution in the gun. All right. So basically that way all the platoon commander or whoever's calling the RD has to do is say FPF and you can immediately start shooting HE rounds. All right. So you'll agree upon what FPF means but typically it means keep shooting until I say stop. All right. Any questions about that? So as soon as you get in game, you should always start calculating your TRPs. All right. And same goes for the M119s. We'll talk about using the BCS, but uh, typically the same same method applies. All right, good. All right, so if everyone, uh, if the crews, can you guys take your mortars? One on the far one, uh, up to six on the near one. Uh, go ahead and stand by your guns. All right, with your partners. Well, you should only have one FPF per weapon system. Yeah, a lot of commanders don't realize that. Alright, does everyone have me on these means? I don't think you get me on these Yep. Yes. Alright, guys. So what we're going to do is we're going to have each guy shoot four and each guy load four. Alright, uh, so the way the mortars work are as follows. Basically, uh, the round, what round you put in the tube is based on which round you pick up first. So please don't pick up any rounds yet. Alright, so when it's your time to assist, what you should usually do is if you want to be sure that you're firing the same uh, round, like firing HE, then you should load your inventory with only HE. Uh, same goes if you're trying to fire Willy Pete, you should only load Willy Pete. Alright, at this point, what I want you guys to do is uh, I'm going to give everyone one target, alright, and then I want we're going to shoot that, and then your next uh, three shots are going to be uh, at your target that you calculated, alright? So pick who's going to be uh, loading first and who's going to be gunning first. 
Alright, loader, I want you to pick up four HE rounds out of the boxes. Sweet. Alright. Thanks. We're gonna talk about how, the, how to work the mortars. So, the standard crew shooting. procedure right. for the mortars is gonna be as follows. Alright, gunner, okay. uh, you're gonna adjust on the target. Uh, when you want the loader to load around, you're gonna say, hang it. Loader, when the progress bar finishes, with the ace crew interaction, all right, to load around, look at the mortar, press your uh, ace uh, interaction other, go to crew serve menu, and hit load. When the progress bar finishes, you say up, all right, then the gunner will fire, uh, and then at that point, you can load the next round and he, when he says hang it. If you want to achieve maximum rate of fire, my strategy is, uh, loader, after you've loaded the round, the progress bar finishes, click your ace self-interaction, get the cruiser menu up, the cruiser weapon menu up, but don't hit load, because it will not allow you to load unless he's fired the weapon. At that point, like, keep your mouse hovering over load, so that as soon as he fires, uh, and says, hang it, you can load the next round. Alright, any questions? Alright, stand right, by for, uh, mission. Sorry if I screwed up. <laughs> Don't worry. So are we supposed to be shooting at the FPF? No, stand by for a uh, fire mission. He'll, he'll give oh, you the okay. coordinates and everything. Alright guys, so uh, this is how typically uh, mortars are given. So, so I'm going to say, one round, all, right, all guns, one round, charge medium, six zero 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 deflection, elevation, one zero five zero. Fire at my command. Alright, as soon as you guys are laid on and you've got a round loaded, give me a ready check on the 343. Should I just say hang it? I should load the gun right. What, you gotta tell me to hang it? Hang yes. It. Sorry. Is, it, is there a way that's oh. not using the mouse to adjust the gun? Kids, is that if you don't know how to see what your elevation is, you need, when you're in the gun as the gunner, click the T and E, add, add, add action, it says uh, view T and E, and then in the upper left it'll show you what your elevation, your azimuth is. Move the mouse so that your, those numbers are the same as the ones I just gave you. Uh, what's the elevation again? Azimuth, or, uh, deflection, six zero 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 elevation, one zero five zero, charge medium. One zero five zero, okay. Alright. Give me a ready check when you guys are ready to shoot. Should we load a ready check? Or should we wait to take a load in? To load after the ready check. Yeah. Negative yeah, load first. Okay. Kid, right. Got three ready. Two ready. Five ready. One ready. Six ready. Hope it will shoot. She said the ready check, I didn't hear. So what's your guys' okay. right now? I really... Yeah, we'll see. Mm -hmm. Should be at 10506. Zero, zero, elevation, first line, 1050. Zero, zero, second line, 6000. Zero, 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 mil. Oh, I thought it was 600. Yeah. No, 6000. Six thousand. Or sixty thousand. Six zero zero zero. All right, perfectly on the line here. All right, gun one, are you ready? There you go. Falcon, can you help me with uh, loading? I don't know how I load. <laughs> Roger. Who are you? Uh, Chris, Team Four. All right, so Chris. 
Where are you? Back team six. Team team four uh, to the right. Yes. Yeah. Okay. User so right. is interaction queue. Go to okay. CSW. Here, go to CSW good. menu and then click load. Alright, gun one. You guys ready? Okay. It says a oh, wrong ammo. Wrong ammo. Did you uh, pick up uh, HE rounds? Ooh. Where can I pick it up? In the boxes to your uh, right. Oh, okay. Sorry. <clears throat> hey, Sniper, did you load it yet, or are we just waiting for it? Um, I tried to load, and it said it was already loaded. You guys good? Yeah. The top right of your screen is green, where it says M252. Gun one, fire. Order. You're loaded. Gun two, fire. Ooh. Gun three, fire. Gun four, fire. Okay. Uh, no can do. Uh, it says uh, remove Gun ammo five, first. Fire. Remove Fire. what? Remove yeah, ammo Fire. first. What? Okay, so I when you click load, it says remove Sorry, ammo first. Remove, remove current Fire. magazine Fire. first. Um, actually, it is Kurt. <laughs> there seems to be already ammo in the mortars. Alright, gun two. Okay, then there should be ammo in there. Fire short. Is there still a round in there, kids? Here, stand by. Okay, no, when I clear artillery computer, it says there's already eight rounds in the mortar. Oh, that's weird. You gotta be check. You gotta be careful and check it. Make sure you check it after your guy loads it. Okay. I did. I have it on medium. Um, I've checked. What's your elevation then? Yeah. Um, it seems to occur to me that there's already eight rounds with the more order. Yeah, it has something like magazines. I can see my loaded stuff next to this mortar you're fine. strike. Q, you're probably okay. Hmm. So you're, you're like... Okay, so somebody fired on a short charge. So guys, really check your charge. Someone shot close. Hey, Chris is still having a problem over here. Yeah. Oh, sorry hey, about uh, that. These mortars seem to have like a magazine loaded into them. So the crew serve weapon is not working. They shouldn't. Yeah, no, look at it. It has eight rounds in it. Oh. Uh, Here, let, let me get it out. <laughs> That's not a good sign. Here, I'll talk, just like look at it. Hold on one second. Yeah, mine have the same thing. You have to unload it first. Oh, yeah, I gotta, uh, yeah, unload it first, guys. Sorry. Alright, uh, go in the gear for the uh, mortar and unload all the. Uh, no, no, no. no. Just, you can use the ace interaction oh. to use to unload. Roger. Again. Let's throw the mortar rounds. <laughs> Alright, sorry. Who was on close? Was that you? Kids? Yeah, sorry. I forgot to change it. Alright, make sure it happens again. We'll shoot it Mortar, again. unload it. Alright, All you right. can load it now. Alright, gun Big four, slurred. did you shoot your round? Uh, gun load, uh, they have not. Alright, gun four, go ahead and, go ahead and fire. Alright, up. Oh. Four firing. One already. Alright, and gun five, let's see it on, on medium again. Alright, firing. Alright. Okay, hang. Alright! Congratulations, everyone got rounds on target. Alright, so everyone everyone did a nice job. Alright, uh... Now, one last thing before we move on and I'll let you fire your guys' at your guys' TRP, and that's dispersion. These mortars don't have a lot of natural dispersion, so uh, in order to gain area effect, what you should do is uh, you should move your... Uh, you should manually disperse the rounds a few clicks uh, in e both in elevation and in uh, deflection when you fire each round. Uh, the only time you won't do this is if you have a destruction mission, which we'll talk about later. Alright, and uh, to give you an idea of how much you should be dispersing, remember one milliradian over one kilometer is one meter. So somewhere between uh, plus and minus ten plus and minus 20 uh, on the deflection and same thing uh, plus or minus
minus 5 and plus or minus 10 on the elevation will give you a good dispersion on your mortar rounds, make them more lethal. Alright, at this time, I'd like each gun to lay in onto its TRP, alright, using the solution you calculated before. All guns, fire when ready. Alright, what well, was the Make sure you send the again? right charge for your own right. solution. Azimuth was 2690. 3690? 2690. Okay. I want an elevation, or you got it. Okay. Ready? 2690. Let's see. So for some reason, I have my head, you're doing this tomorrow. And the right. elevation. Okay, was... and elevation? Elevation oh. is one one six three. I didn't realize Falcon was doing this today because he didn't put it on the calendar. Hang it. Hang it. Okay, oh. hang it. Okay. Oh. Oh. oh, and the uh, distance was medium. Or er, sorry, charge medium. Alright, fire three rounds at your TRP and hang disperse it. them. Two six nine zero. When you're done, just get out of your mortar yep. and stand behind you. 2690. Alright, so 2690. Alright, got it on. Fire it. Hang it. Gonna ready. Up. Up. Let some of the, ins any of the instructors Morty. know if you have problems. What? What? Up. Drunk emanation. I have no idea. What the hell? Wait. I think I need new ammunition. Yeah, just pick up the well, ammunition that's right on the border base there. Oh. For firing? Uh, firing just... round. They're actually barely in visual range. That's cool. Oh, yeah. Up. Oh. Uh, okay, loading. Alright, guys. When you're done with your three shots, stand behind your mortar so I know how to. Gun ready. You guys have any problems, questions? Problems or questions, anyone? Hang it. Nope. Oh. Oh. You can, you can have Did more I than one around here, so you don't have to do that every time. Alright, while we're waiting for everyone to finish, uh, guys who are gunners, grab the grab a uh, couple, like four or five rounds, and assistant gunners, uh, go ahead and hop on the mortar and open up the T&E. Up. Four firing. Son of a bitch, my arm crashed. Up. Okay, bud, hang it. Yep, hang it. All right, if you just switch gunners, hold fire. All right, are you guys finished? Four firing. Hold them like I need Alright, you guys done? Yes, we are done. We fired three rounds. Okay, cool. Alright, so everyone switch. Make sure the new gunners are in. Assistant gunners, uh, if you were a gunner, go ahead and grab rounds. When you're ready, everyone uh, let me know. Alright, we'll do check down the line. Uh, check in it when you're ready in order, please. Starting with gun one, let me know if you're ready to go. I'm stuck in mode oh. one, I can't move. You got the ammo kids? Hey Bob. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Bob. Kick up, Chuck. Yeah, my armor crashed. Are we allowed to fire? Oh, no, no, no. Everyone sit tight. So we got desync. I didn't notice. Up, check lost connection. So everyone just hold tight for a second.
Alright. Is everyone, everyone good? Are you still stuck in the mortar or whatever? Yeah. Does it show you in the mortar? Because for us it shows you you're out. Uh, context is good. Uh, I'm really okay. right. Yeah, sorry, just positioned it a little bit to get some spread. Yeah, oh, I know. It was fine. It was really not that far off. All right, I kind of bumped the mouse a bit too, so. Alright, is everyone switched here? Yeah. Yes. Alright, guys, yep. go ahead and lay yes. in on, uh, so standby for fire mission. All guns, fire mission. Deflection, six zero zero zero. Charge medium, elevation, one zero five zero. Did you assistant gun or gun last time? Steady. Mm. Oh, and remember to switch it to medium. <laughs> right. You know, so it doesn't kill us all. <laughs> Repeat yeah. fire mission. Fire mission. Deflection. What was the zero, zero, zero. Charge medium. Six zero zero zero. Elevation one zero five zero. Yeah, deflection is sorry. Azimuth is six triple zero, and elevation is one zero five zero. Got it. Got all guns, check in when you're ready to fire. You're checking in, not me. Oh right. Five ready. Ready. Oh, oh, oh. I didn't say fire. I said check in when you're ready to fire, not shoot. Oh, sorry. Okay. Yeah. Let's, uh, let's try to be more conscientious about stuff like that. And if you have, if there's any question, don't don't shoot. I did say five ready, which sounds suspiciously like fire. All right, five. Go ahead, fire when ready. Firing. All right. Four. As soon as you see their mortar splash, good. You're good to fire. Okay, round loaded. Just don't fire it. <laughs> right. No. Yeah. What I found right. really cool, You're the good? sound of the mortar round fire going right. down the tube. Oh, hold on. Hold the fire. Yeah. <laughs> hey, <laughs> that does sound pretty shoot? neat. Four ready to fire. Oh, okay. oh. 81 millimeter mortars. Alright. Whoa! What? I don't know what's happening. <laughs> I think he just set off a chain reaction, dude. All right, let's not he told let's me not fire, end though. the 81 millimeter mortars, guys. That's not good. All right. Okay. Go ahead and fire. Gun four. Fire four. Firing. Gun three. On their splash. Fire. Yeah, copy gun three ready. Fire. Alright, gun two. Up. What's the deal? Why are you guys firing? <laughs> huh? Yeah, there's a splash. Yeah, there's a splash. Certainly looks like it. maybe it's these guys. What's up, guys? How are you guys firing? Firing is safe. Okay, up, got it. Alright, on their splash, you guys can go ahead and fire. Okay. There you go. Alright, you see their splash, go ahead and fire.
Alright. <laughs> you know it'll be fun if you put some enemies right there. Alright, all guns, <laughs> this is Vader yeah. Command. Fire on your TRPs, time now. First one, first uh, gun crew to be fired, fired their three rounds and stand behind their mortar wins the e-cookies. Alright, what? Go ahead, fire when ready. On fire your TRP. Fire our own uh, TRP. Oh, okay. Yes. TRP 6. When we are ready? 106. Yes. Two six nine zero and oh, one one six three. Okay, elevation one forty seven thirty. Elevation twelve twenty nine. Charge four. Do it. And it's far. Alright. Ready to Elevation thirteen fourteen zero. Fire on ready. Twelve twenty nine. Okay. Firing. Hang it. Yeah, 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 yeah. Hang it what? Hanged. Yeah. Hang it. Hang it. Oh, hang it. Oh, hang it. Firing. Yeah. Hang it. Up. Three rounds. Yes. We're done. Hanged. Up. Firing. Firing? That was three rounds, right? Uh, yeah, that was three rounds. Oh, yeah, that was. Up. Uh oh. Up. Stand by. Firing. Three rounds fire. Alright. Hey, <laughs> bye. <laughs> Up. So, um, Up. Whoa, how did that next mm -hmm. get so close? Alright, um, I can go like, uh... Looks like gun three. Fire, like, down, so. No, I was just gonna go over like the the basics, basically. Oh, like operating? Yeah, can you just go load up a fire, just go type in a random fire mission in BCS and uh... So we have something, thanks. Hey, Falcon, I can observe if you want. What? I can go no. observe somewhere. No, we're not gonna observe yet. We're just gonna have them shoot like random fire missions first. Okay. Load it. All right. When you guys are done, stand behind your borders. All right, everyone. Cool. You done, blood? Thank you. Dang it. Load it. Out of ammo. Alright, that's fine. That's fine. Alright, guys, on me. Everyone on me. Alright, any questions regarding the mortars? Everyone feel like they know what they're doing? Yeah, that was good. Alright. Yep. Learn Wait. something? Learn yeah, a lot. That was useful. Yep. Alright. The main thing though, I mean that's really all there is to it. Uh, same thing with 60 mils, works the same way. Uh, with direct lay, uh, basically the best way to do that is just kind of uh, get a grid estimation and then just adjust yourself. For adjustments, left, right, add, drop. Uh, you can either recalculate the fire mission, which is difficult, uh, or you can keep in mind one mil is one, uh, one meter at a thousand uh, meters and you can figure out the adjustments that way. Uh, yeah, the way you do the range adjustments is I just look, go to the range tables and let's say they wanted it, like let's say we're firing HE charge medium at uh, 1050 meters, right? And they needed a 50 meter adjustment, then you just look at what it is for a thousand, adding it into your corrections. All right, does that make sense? Yep, All right. Mm -hmm. All right. That's the same way you can get the dispersion. Like, if you want a, a, a hundred meter dispersion, like a hundred meter, like a fifty meter dispersion, look at. Okay, so I'm shooting at HE charge medium at thousand meters. That means I'm going to disperse between one one six three and one zero nine or six, 
right? That's going to be my dispersion for my elevation. Does that make sense? So just using the range tables for the elevation and then deflection, you can just do uh, using your own, your, using your head. It's pretty simple. You know, 500 meters means you know it's half a radi, it's half a meter at a thousand, at a 500 meters. So, you know, if you want to adjust 50 meters to the right, you gotta change your deflection by 100 or th yeah, 100. Pretty simple. All right. All right. Cool. That should even out the teams, hopefully. All right. So uh, we're gonna do the M119s next. All right. So this is the really complicated part of this training. So uh, if you guys run over here, uh, we're let's regroup behind the 119s, and we'll talk about it. Hi, do you have a fire mission uh, for us? Alright, so M119. Oh, my God. Alright, fine, just get one started. Alright, uh, so the M119s, uh, it's a little more complicated, uh, but it works under the same basic principles, right? At the end of the day, we're going to be firing a shell with a charge. Right, we have some fusing we need to talk about too, but in general, charge, elevation, and deflection is what it boils down to. All right. So first thing we'll talk about is prepping the RD shells and how that works. So these boxes here are the Ace uh, RD ammunition. All right. So basically, if you use your Ace uh, other interaction key on them, you'll see that you have an option to prep RD rounds. All right. So don't do it yet. Uh, everyone can come over here and look at it, but let's not prep any. So find one of these four boxes here. Look at it. Right, when you bring up the dialog, you'll see that uh, you have a list of available rounds. So, for example, in this box, I have 10 105 millimeter M1 HE rounds. All right. You have a dialog with the uh, prepare box, and you're going to have a charge. You can set the charge using charge up and charge down. Most of these rounds have eight charges. You can see what charge it is in the white diagram on the right. So if you charge down, you'll see that you're removing charge bags. All right. If you add it up, you'll see you'll go all the way back up to uh, the big green charge bag. You'll have different options for fusing. All right. So HE has point detonate, which is uh, a round that will detonate as soon as it hits the ground. A proximity round, which detonates within nine meters of the ground. All right, it uses a uh, basically a mini radar altimeter to do that. All right, there's a time round. All right, where you can set a fuse time. So after the gun is fired, this is how long the round will fly before it detonates. Uh, to set the fuse, you just type in the number you need in that form, form uh, format. Number number dot zero. You can shortcut it. You can put in like point one. That works or 1.1, whatever you need. Uh, don't do that though. All right, and then there's delay. A delay round is basically an HE round that has uh, a certain amount of time after it impacts before it, it'll go off. So that's used for like infantry in bunkers or in trenches or undercover. All right, so hit escape to exit that dialogue. If you actually want to prep the round, you'll hit prep round at that point, but we're not going to do that yet because or else these guys are going to have like 8 million rounds to sort through. Alright, so when you do prep a round, I'm going to do one really quick. So when you prep a round, you'll see a dialog in the upper left. You'll, you'll say prep round. You'll be able to, you'll have to re-enter the fuse and the charge for each round, right? Because you need to set it. And then behind you will spawn an artillery round. So if everyone looks now, you should see that I'm standing in front of a 105 millimeter artillery round. All right. So each of the rounds look different, right? If it's got a white body, that means it's like a smoke round. The green ones are HE. I don't know what all the color codes are, but I'm sure new does. Also, the fusing's all different. So uh, you should be able to tell from looking at it. Roger, wait one. Alright, so uh, you'll see um, when you go up to it and you look at it, 
you should get a little hint. It says 105 millimeter M1. Uh, it says it's a point detonate and charge eight, right? So it'll tell you what it is. So you have an ace interaction. You can pick up the shell. When you pick up the shell, it attaches to you, right? And then you can also drop the shell with your self interaction. So pick up and drop. All right, to load load the gun, you pick up the shell. You walk over to the gun. You use your self interaction on the gun, and you hit load. That loads the shell into the gun. All right, to unload, same thing with unload, and that pops the shell out. And you'll you'll ha be carrying it at that point, and then I can drop it. All right. So when when uh, when they give you a fire mission, they're going to give you information about the ammo. You know, they'll say HE charge seven point detonate, HE charge seven fuse one one point two whatever it happens to be alright and that's how you prepare uh, a lot of times you'll know what charge you'll be firing at so your battery commander might tell you to prepare you know prepare uh, a bunch of charge 5 HE rounds or something like that because you have you're gonna be shooting that charge for most of your missions does that make sense? Mm -hmm. yes okay so that's the loading side of things now comes the harder part, which is the actual gun. All right, and uh, the easiest way to do this, um, kind of hard without you guys being able to actually see it. But I'm gonna talk through it, and then everyone can go to their guns, just so you can watch me doing it first. So you get in the gun. So when you get in the gun, you'll just be sitting on the howitzer. You'll be looking at the sight unit in front of you, and uh, really, there's nothing special. All right. You can, so the basic controls to move the gun are as follows. Uh, you can use the arrow keys to elevate and shift the barrel left and right. Alright, and that, that's pretty fine adjustment. It goes really slow. So if you hold down shift and do it, it goes much faster. Alright, so I can change the gun like that. Alright, that's the only way to actually move the gun is using the arrow keys. Alright, so, so yeah, shift makes it go fast, er, uh, just the arrows for fine, fine control. Alright, but unfortunately that's not very useful, right, we have, we've got the gun, we can point it at places, but we don't know where it's pointed at, right, not, not helpful. So, what we do is we're going to use the sight unit, alright, so when you, when you get in the gun, there's two things you need to know. First is uh, you'll see an action to view M137 slash M187, which is the sight unit on the gun itself. It'll pop up a dialog box, all right? And uh, that allows you, so you'll see your azimuth, you'll see your deflection, you'll see your elevation, you'll see a level, a bubble level, and then you'll see a bunch of things. It says plus and minus elevation, plus or minus deflection. All right. So, uh, and then uh, four more buttons, and that's for the sight unit. Um, you can change the. Um, oh boy, what is it called? Pi. Where do you go? That? What's the OP and the other thing that you don't use, like when you're the OP and the RE? Do you know what that is? Okay. Uh, it's for the so you can like have the azimuth actually work. Do you know what I'm talking about? I have no idea what those are. I think the uh... most are talking about like. Gunner's corrections. Right, that's what I think they are. I think. Yeah, it's like. On, um, sometimes after you see might send you down, like, a gunner's correction, you apply that to your sights. Alright, whatever. Don't touch them, okay? Yeah, don't touch yeah. them. <laughs> <laughs> I know I had to use like, one of those when I had relocated one and set up the stakes from scratch. Ah, uh, yeah, that's what it is. It's for setting up the aiming stakes and doing that, which, 
uh, is really complicated and we're not going to cover it in this course. Okay. Uh, so the only ones you really need to worry about is the um, the deflection and the elevation, which are the, the, the top four buttons there. All right. So the way the sight unit works basically is uh, the gun uh, the gun commander knows what the the original lay of the gun was. Right, so when you set up the when you set up the guns in the mission brief, the mission the mission maker will tell you uh, these ones are actually set up to be uh, due west. Okay, so they're at, uh, at 8,400 mils originally. 4,800. What? You say 8,400. I was like, what? Oh, sorry, 4,800. I say 84. Whatever. So they're so they're set up due west. So 80, uh, 4,800 is the original mils. All right. So when the when we talk about how to compute the fire missions, um, we'll need to know that. So when you get in as a gunner, you go to you get the M one three seven sight unit. All right. So what the sight unit does is when when you want to shift, let's say I need to shift the gun to fire on fifty two hundred mils, right? So in order to do that. I need to move the gun 400, 400, uh, 4,000 mils to the, sorry, 400 mils to the right, correct? Yep. So, uh, the way the sight unit works is the sight unit turns in the opposite direction of the gun, and then you move the gun to reline up with your aiming stakes. So when the guns are set here, they're set facing uh, due west at 4,800 mils, and the sight unit is aligned with the aiming stakes. All right. Does that make sense? And when you get in as a gunner, you'll see your deflection. Your deflection is 3,200. And the reason they do that is so you don't have to, if you start with a deflection of zero, that way you don't have to worry about negative numbers, right? Because we can go to zero and we can go to 6,400. All right? So that covers a full circle and we don't have to think about, like, if we're going left, we have to be negative. So they start us at whatever, whatever your original lay direction is, that deflection is called 3200 degrees. Does that make sense? So if I want to move to the right, the gun to the right, what I'm going to do is I'm going to adjust my deflection so that uh, I'm going to adjust my sight unit to move to the left. All right. So if you see now, you can actually see the sight unit turning as I change the deflection. So I've just moved the deflection 400 mils to the to the left, all right. So now the sight unit of the gun is pointing out over here somewhere, right? And it, so if I go and I go look through my gunner's optic, all right. So to do this, you hit zero, or you can bring up the thing and hit change view. I'll see that I'm misaligned with my aiming stakes by 400 mils. And your aiming stakes are the one that's that ones that are like 45 degrees out from the gun. Or 20 degrees out from the gun, all right. It's kind of hard to tell. These guns are really close, so if you see a bunch of aiming stakes, it'll be very obvious when you're on yours because they'll be close and the two stakes will be lined up together, all right. Uh, so in order to see that, just when you get in your your own gun, look down the sight originally. Have both guys do it so they see what it looks like when you're lined up on your stakes. All right. So I've shifted my sight unit 400 mils to the left, all right. So now I want to move my gun to the right. So I'm going to get in and I'm going to look down the sights. And there's two ways you can change the gun. So first is you can move the gun with the, sh with the shift and the arrows like we talked about. Or you can actually have some your assistant gunner drag the gun around. All right? And this is a lot faster and it's used because the gun can only maneuver uh, so many mils traversing. So you might need to actually do this occasionally. So the gunner, the assistant gunner can actually physically move the gun around. Right, to get out, just hit X, and uh, use the shift gun left or right. When you shift the gun right, it points the barrel farther to the right, even though you'll be pulling on the left side. Does that make sense? Yep. All right, so again, is the gunner. I'm looking down my sight unit. All right, and I'm looking for my aiming stakes. Sorry, takes a second. It's really hard to do this without uh, a field of view for the gunner's sight is not very big. So 
It's the easiest way to do it is to have someone adjust you while you're sitting on the gun. Looks like it didn't go far enough. I have to adjust a little bit more. So I gotta pull the gun around to the right a little more, and I'll be lined up on my stakes. And when I'm lined up on my stakes, that means I've shifted 400 mils to the to the right because I've changed my deflection 400 mils to the left, so my sight units move to the left. 400 mils. I've corrected it back to where it was, so now I'm good to go. Alright, so there. So now I've adjusted back onto my aiming stakes. So if, ever, if anyone wants to rotate through the gun, uh, hop in the gunner seat, hit zero on the numpad, and that's what it looks like when you're lined up on your stakes. Uh, if anyone's curious or doesn't know what that looks like, go ahead and do that now. And, and by default, any gun you jump on, if you look in the sights, will be lined up on the aiming stakes. 